Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to now come back to the topic of recurrence relations and we're going to see how we can solve them using generating functions. So just as an overview, a big picture perspective, imagine we've got a recurrence relation that we'd like to solve. So this recurrence relation gives rise to a sequence. That sequence we can put as the coefficients of some generating function. That generating function hopefully we can write it as a rational function. If we can, then that's great, because once we've written it as a rational function, we can use coefficient extraction to pull back the terms of the sequence, coming up with an expression for the nth term of the sequence, and therefore solving the recurrence relation. Let's see how we can do this in practice. So we'll start with the recurrence relation. The first order one, a n minus three a n minus one equals n. And we've got an initial condition there, a naught equals one. This recurrence relation represents infinitely many equations. What are the equations? Well, we've got the initial condition a one equals zero, but I won't include that one here. I'll start with the recurrence relation and plug n equals one into it. So maybe I'll just make a note here. I'm putting n equals one into the recurrence relation. And so that is a one minus 3a0 is equal to n, in this case it's 1. So there's one equation. We can get another equation with n equals 2. That becomes a sub 2 minus 3a sub 1 is equal to 2. We get another equation for n equals 3, a sub 3 minus 3a sub 2 is equal to 3, and so on. So there's our infinitely many equations that we can get from this recurrence relation. Now what we're going to do is for each of these equations, we're going to multiply by x to the, well I've written here for the kth equation, we'll multiply by x to the k. So in this case, we take our first equation, a1 minus 3a0 is equal to 1 and we multiply through by x to the 1, so we multiply through by x. And so there we go. We take our second equation, a sub 2 minus 3a sub 1 equals 2, and we multiply by x squared. We take our third equation and multiply by x cubed. And we do that for all the infinitely many equations. At this stage, what we do is we add up these equations. So we sum them all up. So we'll sum up all these ones, and then we'll sum up all these terms, and then we'll sum up everything on the right-hand side. So when we sum them all up, what we get is a1x plus a2x squared plus a3 x cubed plus dot dot dot. That is the sum of all of these. And then we've got minus 3. And I notice that there's a factor of an x in common with all of these, so I'll pull that out front as well. So I've got a minus 3x. And then what's left over in that sum is a naught plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot 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 that goes on forever, and then that's equal to the sum of everything on the right-hand side, which is x plus 2x squared plus 3x cubed plus dot dot dot. And so we've summed everything up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let a of x be the generating function for the sequence that satisfies the recurrence. So it's the generating function and goes from 0 to infinity, a n, x to the n. Then, what does this previous equation become? Well, what is this? This is basically the a of x function, but the constant term is missing. So that is a of x minus a naught. And then we've got minus 3 times x. What is all of this? Well, that's just a of x. So we've got an a of x there. And that's equal to 
And what is all this? Well, that is, let's see, can we write that in a rational form? That is x times 1 plus 2x plus, two, plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed plus dot dot dot. So that is x times the generating function for the consecutive integer starting at 1. And we know what that is. That's x times 1 over 1 minus x all squared. In other words, this whole thing is just equal to x over 1 minus x all squared. That's great because we can write that on this side now. And so we have an equation that our generating function has to satisfy. In particular, we also know that a sub 0, initial condition, is 1. So this is an equation where the only unknown is a of x. And so the next part says, plug in our initial condition, which we've essentially done that, and then solve or isolate for a of x. So we've got a of x minus 1 minus 3x a of x is equal to x over 1 minus x squared. Isolating a of x on the left hand side, it's isolated there with a factor of 1 minus 3x in front of it. Moving that negative 1 to the other side of the equation as a 1, we get a 1 plus x over 1 minus x all squared. Now we can divide by the 1 minus 3x and we solve for a of x. And we get this expression. 1 minus x all squared. And there we go. We've written a of x as a rational function. It's actually the sum of two rational functions, which in turn is a rational function. But what have we done? What we've done is the solution to the recurrence relation that we're after are the coefficients of this generating function. We've written that generating function in such a way that we can now do coefficient extraction on it. So in order to do that, we go ahead and do a partial fraction decomposition. So a of x is equal to the partial fraction decomposition. Well, we've got this 1 over 1 minus 3x. Coefficient extractions, not a problem on that one. It's this one here that we have to do the partial fraction decomposition of. Write one term with a 1 minus 3x on the bottom, and then possibly another couple of terms with a 1 minus x and a 1 minus x squared on the bottom. But we've done the details of partial fraction decompositions, so that's just um, purely a, a mechanical technique for doing this decomposition. So I'm just going to write down the result. You can check it on your own. So the partial fraction decomposition in this case turns out to be, well, there's a 1 minus 3x term in the bottom. There's also a 1 minus x term. And there's going to be a 1 minus x all squared term. The numerators in each of these cases are 7 quarters, negative 1 quarter, and negative a half. Now that we've done the partial fraction decomposition, then we can go ahead and extract coefficients. We are interested in the nth coefficient of a of x because that's what a sub n is. What is the nth coefficient? Well, we can do it one by one. It's the nth coefficient of this plus the nth coefficient of this plus the nth coefficient of this. The nth coefficient of the first one, well, there's a 7 quarters. And then we've got the nth coefficient of 1 over 1 minus 3x. That has a coefficient of 3 to the n. Then we get the next term. We've got a negative 1 quarter. And then the nth coefficient of 1 over 1 minus x. Well, that's the sequence, or that's the generating function for the sequence of 1s. So its nth coefficient is just 1. And then we've got negative 1 half. And the nth coefficient of 1 over 1 minus x squared, that's the rational form of the generating function for the sequence of consecutive integers. And so its nth coefficient is going to be n plus 1. And so what we get is that it's 7 quarters, 3 to the n, and then we've got a 
minus 1 half n, and then we've got a minus 1 half, minus a quarter, so that's minus 3 quarters. And there we go. We have solved the recurrence relation. We solve the recurrence relation by saying let a of x be the generating function for which the solution of the recurrence relation are the coefficients. We then wrote that generating function as a rational function in such a way that we could then do coefficient extraction on it. And we did our coefficient extraction and got our solution. And so there we go. Solved the recurrence relation using a technique involving generating functions. And that's what this section is about. So we'll just do a couple more examples. So in this example, we've got a second order recurrence relation. We've got a couple of initial conditions. And our goal is to find a rational expression for the generating function, which gives the sequence that solves the recurrence relation. We'll proceed as we did before. We'll write down an equation for the smallest value that we're allowed to take in the recurrence relation, so that's n equals 2. It's a2, and I'm going to leave a bit of space, minus 5a1, and I'll leave a bit more space, plus 6a0, and a bit of space is equal to 0. So I've just spaced things out, because we're going to fill some stuff in there in a second. And then we'll do the equation for n equals 3. And maybe one more for n equals 4. So there's a couple of equations that our recurrence relation represents. In fact, there's infinitely many of them. So we've got a dot, dot, dot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by x to the n in each case. So multiply by x squared in that one. We're going to multiply by x cubed in this one, and we're going to multiply by x to the fourth in this one, and then we do that all the way down. So we've got an x squared, x squared, x squared, that's why I've left the space there so I could put these things in, x cubes multiplied in all of these. We also multiply it to the right hand side, but the right hand side in this case is all zeros. And similarly for this one. And then what we do is we sum up. We sum up over all of these equations. So what we get is the sum of all of these ones. And notice that it's a2x squared plus a3x cubed plus a4x to the fourth. So we're basically summing up a n x to the n. We've just missed the first two terms. So that sums up to all of a x, but the first two terms are missing. So we'll write it like that. It's a of x minus a0 minus a1 of x. In other words, I had to remove the first two terms. And then what about the next column? What does that sum up to? Well, each one of them has a negative 5. All of these have an extra x factor. Notice the power on the x is one more than the subscript on a. So that means I can factor out a negative 5x from each. And then what I'm left with is a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x. So I'm basically got all of a of x with just the first term or the constant term missing. And then similarly for the last column, if I sum up all of these things, I get a common factor of a 6 in every term, and I also have an x squared in common with everything, and then what's left is just the a of x, and that's equal to 0. So now we have an equation in a of x which we can then solve for. It might be worth noting that a0 in this case is 0, and a1 1, so those are our initial conditions. So we've got those values that we can use. And so what survives then? Well, we've got 1ax here. We've got another negative 5ax's and then 6x squared ax's. So on this side of the equation, we have a 1 minus 5x plus 6x squared times a of x. And then what gets pushed to the right-hand side of the equation? Well, we have a negative x, and that's basically it. That survives. So when I bring it over to the other side, I bring it over as an x. So that means a of x 
is equal to x over 1 minus 5x plus 6x squared. But that denominator can factor. That factors as a 1 minus 2x and a 1 minus 3x. And there we go. We have written our generating function a of x as a rational function. And so our solution to the recurrence relation we can get by extracting coefficients. It doesn't ask us to do this, but we might as well. At this stage, we're pretty much done. We've found the rational expression, so then we can go ahead and do coefficient extraction. So we'll do coefficient extraction. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we take a of x, and we do partial fraction decomposition on it, and we're going to write it as the sum of two things, one involving the 1 minus 2x on the bottom, the other one involving the 1 minus 3x on the bottom. In this case, if we do the partial fraction decomposition, we'll get a negative 1 and a 1 as our values in the numerator. And so now we can go ahead and extract coefficients. The coefficient of the first piece is negative 1, and then 2 to the n, and the coefficient on the second piece is 3 to the n. And so there we go. We have solved our recurrence. We have found a value for a sub n. It's 3 to the n minus 2 to the n. We can do a quick check. You know, do these really satisfy the initial conditions? Well, let's see. What's a 0? a0 is 3, 0, minus 2, 0, which is 0. And what's a1? a1 is 3 minus 2, which is 1. So yeah, they satisfy the initial conditions. And in fact, this is a solution to the recurrence relation. And we've done it by using a technique involving generating functions and coefficient extractions with partial fraction decompositions as needed. Now you may say, well, I didn't show you the details of the partial fraction decomposition, how we got these. And I didn't, but that's that's sort of the side a side calculation. I'll leave it for you to actually do that calculation. That's just purely algebra working out these values. All right, let's have a look at the method in general. So what is our general method for solving a recurrence relation using generating functions? So here's a recurrence relation. This one is a kth order recurrence relation. And we take the solution or the sequence that it defines put those as the coefficients of a generating function, a of x. And then we go ahead and try to find a rational form of that. So we do that by setting up a bunch of equations, multiplying by the corresponding power of x, rewrite the infinite sums in terms of a of x, and the right-hand side as a rational function, and then isolate a of x, thereby getting it in the form of a rational function, and then use partial fractions to do our coefficient expansion. So let's have a look at another example. We're going to look at this second order recurrence relation. It's a n minus, and I'm going to leave a little bit of space, minus 4 a n minus 1 plus 4 a n minus 2 is equal to 2 to the n. So there's our recurrence relation that we're interested in. That's for n greater than or equal to 2. And it represents infinitely many equations. And in the past few examples, I wrote down a bunch of them to get started and multiplied by the various powers of x and sum. Uh, but we don't need to do all of those steps now that we're familiar with the process. What is it that's really happening? Well, we are multiplying through by x to the n. And then we are summing. So then we go ahead and we sum. And what do we sum over? Well, our first one started with n equals 2, and so we summed from there. So when we sum, you know, n equals 2 to infinity, that's what we're summing over, we get that this is the sum of a n x to the n, these ones, summing from n going from 2 to infinity, is all of a of x with the first two terms removed, a naught minus a1 of x. And then we got minus 4 times x, 
and then the sum of a n minus 1, x to the n, and now I've removed 1x, so that would be an x to the n minus 1, and we're summing from 2 to infinity, so that picks off a 1x plus a 2x, and x squared, and so on. So that is going to sum to all of a of x with the constant term removed. And then the next one is going to be plus 4x squared, and that'll sum to all of a of x. And then what's left on this side is the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of 2 to the n x to the n. And so there we go. We've got what is an equation that defines a of x, but if we can write this summation as a rational function, then we've got an equation that we can solve for a of x and get it in the form of a rational function. So a couple of things just to note right away. We've got a0 here is 2, a1 is 3, so a0 there is 2. So we've got a of x minus 2 minus 3x minus 4x, a of x minus 2 plus 4x squared, a of x. And what is that equal to? I can factor out a 4 x squared. So that just leaves me with a sum, say from n goes from 0 to infinity of 2nx to the n. So I factored out a 2 squared x squared, and that means I can drop the summation. Instead of starting at 2, I can now start it at 0. And we know what this is as a sum. This is 1 over 1 minus 2x. So then we can write this whole thing as well, there's a 1 minus 4x plus 4x squared, a of x. Everything else I can push to the other side. So I can bring it over as a 2 plus 3x minus 8x. So that minus 8x is coming from the negative 2 times the negative 4x. That becomes an 8x. When I bring it to the other side, it comes over as a negative 8x. And then we've got plus 4x squared over 1 minus 2x. And so this becomes 2 minus 5x plus 4x squared over 1 minus 2x. What's sitting in front of the a of x can factor as a 1 minus 2x all squared. And so this tells me then that I can write a of x as 2 over 1 minus 2x all squared minus 5x over 1 minus 2x all squared plus 4x squared over 1 minus 2x cubed. And now we're perfectly set up to extract coefficients. So let's just recall that 1 over 1 minus ax to the power of k has series expansion and goes from 0 to infinity of the coefficient is choose n from k with repetition and then there's this substitution of a of x in for x so that's a to the n x to the n and so there's our nth coefficient, and this is the formula that we're just going to use three times now. And so we can get a n by extracting coefficients as follows. Coefficient of x to the n of this. Well, there's going to be a 2, and then the fact that we've got a square here means that this is really the generating function for the sequence of consecutive integers starting at 1. And so the coefficient is going to be n plus 1. But because of the substitution there of the 2x, we also have a 2 to the n there as well. And then the next one, minus 5 times the coefficient of x to the n in this is the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 in this part of it. So what's the coefficient of x to the n minus 1? Well, that will be n2 to the n minus 1. And then we've got the last one, is what is the coefficient of 
x to the n in this. It's the coefficient of x to the n minus 2 in 1 over 1 minus 2x cubed. So the coefficient of x to the n minus 2, that's going to be choose n minus 2 from 3 with repetition. And then the substitution, we get 2 to the n minus 2. And so now we just have to clean this up. We basically have our solution. It's just got to get written in a, in a nicer form. So what do we have? We have 2n, 2 to the n, plus 2 times 2 to the n, minus 5n, 2 to the n minus 1, plus 4 times, and that binomial coefficient becomes uh, n choose n minus 2. Uh, but I can absorb that 4 in out front with the 2n minus 2 to just give me a 2 to the n. And so then we have a 2n 2 to the n minus a 5n 2 to the n minus 1. So what I can do is I'll just do a little bit of modification here. I will take another 1 off of the exponent. That means factoring out a 2 and I'll join the 2 with the 2 out front to give me a 4. And that's nice because now I've made these things match so I can add them up. And so that gives me a negative n 2 to the n minus 1. So I'll first put out the term that doesn't involve an n as a factor. Then I'll put out the term that does involve the n as the factor. And then that last term is n choose n minus 2. That's the same as n choose 2, or n times n minus 1 over 2, times 2 to the n. And things are cleaning up quite nicely here, because what I can do next is I can notice that there's pretty much a factor of 2 to the n minus 1 in everything. Again, I'll write this as a 4 times 2 to the n minus 1 minus an n 2 to the n minus 1 plus n times n minus 1 over 2. That division by 2 I can put into the power of 2 here as a 2 to the n minus 1. So now I've got a 2 to the n minus 1 that's a factor of everything. So this becomes a 4 minus n plus n times n minus 1, and all that's times 2 to the n minus 1. And so now I'll just clean up that first part. That becomes an n squared, and then I've got a minus n minus another n, so that's a minus 2n, and then we've got a plus 4. And that's 2 to the n minus 1. And so there we go. We've got it written down in a in a nice way. Maybe I will factor out a 2 from everything, because at least two of the three terms have a factor of a 2 in it. So I'll write it as n squared over 2 minus 2 plus 2. And when I factor out that 2, it comes out to make that a 2 to the n. And there we go. We've got a nice cleaned up version of what the nth coefficient is, and therefore what the solution to the recurrence relation is. And so we've managed to solve this using generating functions. If you want to try it using the techniques we had from before, so finding the characteristic polynomial and then going ahead and finding the homogeneous solution. In this case, we look back at our recurrence relation. It's non-homogeneous. But when we find the roots of the corresponding characteristic polynomial, the roots, it's going to be a double root consisting of 2. So we would expect that our homogeneous solution would have a 2 to the n, an n times 2 to the n, and then we'd look for a particular solution that would involve some n squared times 2 to the n. So we would expect our solution in the end to be some combination of 2 to the n, n times 2 to the n, and n squared times 2 to the n. And that's exactly what we found. And we found it using a different method using generating functions. All right, so that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.